Today I'm looking at the extremely popular and surprisingly affordable Lumina Dashcam. The Lumina Dashcam is a full HD dashcam that packs a lot of really useful features. The unit's body is made from matte black plastic and is pretty compact. The camera mounts to the windshield of your vehicle using these self-adhesive strips. Lumina provides two spare strips in case you need to move your dash cam to another car. Once mounted, it can be powered using the provided mini USB to 12 volt car lighter adapter. One really neat thing about this adapter is that it has a built-in USB port on the 12 volt end. So you can still plug in a USB charger for something like your phone. Now, if you want to power the camera when it's not mounted in your car, you can still use any AC wall adapter and a USB to mini USB cable like this one. Now, in case you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to install this dash cam, I'll leave a link to my detailed installation and setup video for the Lumina. And an important thing to look into before you buy a dash cam are the laws in your specific part of the world for dash cams. Make sure to understand them clearly before you even buy one. To power the camera on and start recording, simply turn your ignition key to the on position or insert your key fob into the vehicle. The camera turns on and and immediately begins recording, you really don't need to do anything else. And when you're done with your trip, simply turn off your car and the dash cam turns off as well. However, if you do turn on the delayed shutdown option, it will keep recording for a few more seconds after your car is turned off. The camera's viewfinder and interface are through its two and a half inch color display. The screen isn't all that sharp or impressive, but it'll help you toggle through menus and set up your shot without any issues at all. And talking about setting up your shot, once you've mounted the camera, you can adjust the lens angle using this knob on the side to make sure you have exactly the shot you want to capture. You might want to test different angles before you set it to a specific angle. The camera's menus and options can all be accessed using the buttons above and below the screen. As I mentioned in the beginning, the camera comes with quite a few nifty features. I won't cover all of them, but here are a few I love. One of the neatest features is the loop recording option, which ensures that you never run out of SD card space. Turn on the option and select your clip size. Now the clip size doesn't matter much, so feel free to select whichever one suits you. And the camera keeps recording and then re-records over the initial footage to ensure that it preserves the last few minutes of footage. Now in cases like an accident, these last few minutes might be very critical. And talking about micro SD cards, make sure to get at least a class 10 micro SD card. Otherwise, when recording full HD footage, the camera will hang and probably stop recording. I'll leave a link to a micro SD card that'll work in the description below. The card inserts into a slot on the right hand side of the camera. Another cool feature is the gravity sensor option. When you turn this on, it preserves the last few minutes of footage in the event of an accident. I do recommend setting the sensitivity to medium to keep it from being triggered by things like potholes. And last but not least, the Lumina dash cam also allows you the option of recording audio. Very useful for things like traffic stops where the audio might be essential. So how's the video quality? For starters, it shoots video in four different resolutions, 1080p, full HD video at 30 frames per second, 720p HD at 30 frames per second, and two standard definition modes that most people will probably never use. I had it recording in the 1080p full HD setting throughout my tests, and the first thing you'll notice about the footage is how wide an angle it shoots at. The camera has a 170 degree field of view, and the footage has a clear date and timestamp on the bottom. Now, don't forget to set the correct time and date when you set it up the first time. The footage from the camera is actually pretty decent. The video has an almost GoPro-like aesthetic to it and everything is sharp and the colors are surprisingly well rendered. It's sharp enough to clearly read license plates from distances as far as two cars ahead of you. And even at distances greater than that, it'll show you exactly what was going on ahead of you thanks to the wide field of view. And even at nighttime, the camera performed pretty decently. It recorded acceptable footage footage in semi-lit places and the road right ahead of your vehicle when the headlights were turned on. And the footage was very smooth and trouble-free. The camera didn't hang or freeze up at any point and the loop function worked like a charm and just kept recording, even once the micro SD card was full. You can play back the footage you record in two ways, either by popping the micro SD card out of the camera and playing it back on a computer or by using the mini HDMI port on the side of the camera and connecting it to a TV. Most people will probably just pop 
pop the micro SD card out and view and save the footage to a computer. And in case your computer doesn't have an SD card slot, you'll need a USB SD card reader like this one. And again, if you need one, I'll leave a link to this one below. And the audio you're hearing right now is also being recorded on the Lumina dash cam. I just wanted to see how it would sound in the instance of, say, a traffic stop. So should you get the Lumina dash cam? If you're looking for a simple, stable dash cam that doesn't cost a lot, the Lumina dash cam is one of the best options out there. It's well designed, works without any issues, records pretty good footage, and is priced very affordably. For less than $100, it buys you a simple recording system that gives you more than enough footage in case you have an incident. I definitely recommend it to anyone in the market for a dash cam. And in case you're looking to buy one, I'll leave a link to the camera below. If you found this video helpful, please give us a big Big thumbs up and subscribe for more reviews, unboxings and how-to videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.